Sometimes you're going to get hate, but unless it's constructive criticism then you need to make sure you know how not to give a f In this video, I'm going to go through an experience I had where I had to learn this lesson and also give you some ideas on how not to let others opinions influence your actions. So my story begins back when I first started university. I had been dropped off to my dorm by my dad and spent my first evening getting settled into my new environment. The next day, my first proper day at uni, I had to attend an induction lecture for my course in computer science with software engineering, which was a pretty dull affair, but during which we were told that for the first year we would need to sign up for a minor in a subject of our choosing. Now, the course the leaders suggested was related to psychology for a specific reason, and so most students after the lecture went straight to sign up for the recommended minor, yours truly doing the same. Now, when I reached the front of the queue to sign up, I wasn't greeted by the lecturer in front of me, and with a disgruntled look he immediately took my papers from my hand and asked in an annoyed tone, what's a major? I wasn't really sure what his problem was, but replied with computer science to which he angrily ranted that he didn't understand why we were being sent to him. He then very curtly said to me, your grades aren't good enough, I don't even understand why the university accepts students like you. Honestly, I was taken aback, as sure enough he wasn't wrong that my grades weren't exactly exceptional. I wasn't a particularly engaged student and in truth, I didn't always live up to my potential. And here I was with my mediocre grades at one of the top universities in the country for my subject. But still, it seemed to me a harsh reaction and frankly, he humiliated me in front of hundreds of people there. In shock, I took my papers back and walked away, signing up to do a communications and IT course instead as my chosen minor. Now, the thing is this experience not only shocked me, but the humiliation and consequent anger I felt never fully left me. There were numerous ways I could have reacted. I chose to use this as motivation. Honestly, I was angry at this guy and so being a naive teen I chose to stick it to the man. I decided I was going to get through university and successfully earn my degree and be someone the uni could take pride in as a student. And the thing is, when people are critical, we can all use the energy they send us in a multitude of ways. You see, I could have reacted in the heat of the moment, I could have shouted or even punched the guy. I know it took some restraint not to. But the truth is, doing so wouldn't have done me any good. I'd be kicked out and I'd waste the opportunity afforded to me. Never mind the sacrifices my family made to allow me to get a higher education. So instead, I reflected on the moment. I questioned why his words hit me so hard and I came to accept that fundamentally, there was some truth in them. However, rather than reacting with conflict, I chose to use my pent up anger to motivate me, make me hungry and ultimately, allow me to prove a point. You see, the key is to manage your emotions. When faced with a difficult circumstance, especially when someone is criticising you, your emotions can either be of use or they can be to your detriment. For me, allowing my emotions to take a hold of me was not going to benefit me, but using them to fuel my motivation, well sometimes that's the difference to me succeeding and failing. And I hold this fact to this day, I may not have the individual in question in my life anymore but I always seek to prove the hypothetical doubters wrong of what I'm capable of. After all, I choose to be in charge of my destiny and don't let the perceptions of others control it. This leads us to understanding the next point, that you choose your identity. Look, in this experience of humiliation I could either choose to believe I'm an incapable person who wasn't deserving to be where I was, or I could choose to accept I had made it as far as I had and I had the potential to do even more. Those who follow the channel know I fully embrace the idea of having a growth mindset and this experience is one of the key reasons why. You see, I chose to believe that I was capable as a computer science major and that I could grow to succeed in university. And the fact is that I proved myself right in this regard. I grew exceptionally in my time at uni. First and foremost, I did succeed in my course and proved I was capable. But much more importantly, in that journey I helped numerous other people on the course. I grew to be involved in societies and became one of the heads of the one I was most engaged in, helping it grow to be more successful than it ever had been before. But this didn't come with ease, I had identified myself as capable of being successful, but then I had to embody that success. That meant putting in the hours of work and organising my time to keep on top of my responsibilities. It meant I had to commit to an act in congruence with who I identified myself as being, 
but equally acting in faith that I could grow, something I did that no one can take away from me. However, this doesn't mean that you should always dismiss other opinions. Rather, you should ask yourself, is it value? Let me be honest, while I used the emotion I felt to work for me, and while I dismissed the notion of the lecturer that I'm not deserving of the opportunity at university, I didn't completely dismiss what he said. You see, I understood that while his comments shouldn't influence my choice, he made one good point that I could take constructively. That was that I could not expect to succeed if I remained a mediocre student. But it wouldn't help in a more challenging environment and certainly wouldn't help me in the future. The key was reflecting with what was said with objectivity and understanding that there was something of value I could take from it. Sometimes this isn't possible, people will say something that simply doesn't deserve a second thought, but in this case, he hit a nerve and there was a clear reason for that, and thankfully, I had the sense to know I shouldn't ignore it. So sometimes it's best to use criticism constructively if you can, just remember don't give it more weight than it deserves. Importantly though, you need to understand that sometimes, it's for the best. When it all boils down to it, I remember the emotion I felt from this experience and I took great lessons from it, as while it was awful in the moment, the drive it gave me helped me to achieve success. The truth is, I don't give a flying f about the guy and what he said, I can't even remember what he looked like, and barely remember he wore a brown suit. At least I think it was brown, but who knows if I remember it correctly. I look back at it and appreciate his reaction was probably more to do with his pent up frustration than anything I had done, ironic given his field was psychology. The point is, I took an important lesson away from the experience and the emotions and anger I felt were put aside, so I could instead focus on what I envisioned for myself. I've proved I'm capable since and his opinion is of little relevance to me. I chose to continue my path in university and have proven myself as a source of pride as a student there. Importantly though, sometimes these things are for the best, as had I not gone through this encounter perhaps my uni life would have been very different. And if you remember I mentioned I chose communications and IT as my eventual minor, well in that course I met probably the best teacher I ever had in formal education. It was also in that course that I first experienced creating a short film which turned out to be so successful that my team and I won an award for the best short film that year, for which we got applauded for up to 5 minutes from our peers after watching it, and it was one which the lecturer chose to show as an example in subsequent years that followed. Ultimately, it was a source of confidence that today has allowed me to believe I can create and share content here on YouTube, so sure enough, it's important to remember, sometimes a bad experience can lead on to something much, much better.